Welcome to the Continuum Lab. If you know anything about what goes on here in the lab, then you'll know that I'm all about making MIDI instruments. I made so many of them this past couple of years that I honestly lost count. I love MIDI controllers for their simplicity and versatility. Even these simple ones that we make in the Continuum Lab workshops are super powerful. Once they're plugged in, I can select any sound I want. Effects, filters, multiple voices, there's basically no limit. But the thing is, they do need to be plugged in. And not just plugged into a power outlet, mind you, they need a synthesizer to do all the heavy lifting and make the actual audio. Or do they? <laughs> Let me set the scene for you. This is the Click Mini. It's the smaller brother to the Click breakout board and this is the one that we used in the Continuum Lab workshops. It does pretty much the same stuff except it's a bit smaller, it only has one multiplexer output and it has fewer instruments programmed onto it. With it we make simple cardboard instruments like this one and this one here and this one and this plus a couple more. These instruments are specifically designed to be as simple to put together as possible because I want them to work as a good MIDI instrument starting point for kids as young as 4th grade and up. This smaller kit and the workshops were actually my main focus when I first started developing the Continuum Lab instrument kit. The pandemic of course got in the way of most of my workshop plans and so I've had plenty of time this past year to work on the expanded version which I've shared here on the channel at Nauseam. But the few workshops that I did get to do have taught me a lot about the strengths and weaknesses of the concept and uh, one of the main problems that I've discovered is actually the reliance on MIDI itself. You see, in my workshops I normally teach a bunch of kids and their teachers who have absolutely no idea about software synthesizers and DAWs and all that kind of stuff. So in a two hour session I generally don't have time to get into all the software and hardware related to synths. So instead we just build the instruments, uh, talk about DIY sensors, maybe decorate them a bit, and then we plug them into my laptop, which of course already has a bunch of synths specifically prepared for these instruments. And then we play. <laughs> it's good fun and very educational. But when schools started cancelling the workshops because of virus lockdowns and asking to instead buy the electronics to be able to work independently, then having that whole extra dimension of having to manage synthesizers for all the instruments became a real problem. Sure, the instruments are easy to make, but as it turns out, school teachers don't know squat about software synthesizers. So that's what I've been working on for the past couple of months. Quietly, behind the scenes, while finishing the click tutorials, I've been making the Click Mini totally self-contained by incorporating onboard audio as well as battery power. Let me just be totally clear here. All of these instruments will still work as MIDI controllers as well. So you can still plug them into your favorite synthesizers and use all your favorite sounds just like before. But now you will also have the option to play uh, without any external gear or software, without knowing anything about MIDI or synthesizers. So what's possible with the new setup? Well first, let's talk about the sounds. I decided to go with the Teensy's Wavetable synthesizer as the main sound engine. So I curated a collection of semi-realistic sounds specifically for the instruments that can be made using the kit. The actual memory on the chip is quite limited, so these are not super high-end fancy Steinway samples and what have you. My focus here has been on having a nice varied set of decent sounds which are recognizable as real instruments much in the same way that the instrument designs themselves are made from simple cardboard, but at the same time they're obviously based on actual acoustic instruments. <laughs> 
This kit is, first of all, a teaching tool. It is not here to help you make the perfect instrument of your dreams and go tour the world with your band, okay? Even though the instruments really work and they really are very cool, the point is to help and inspire kids and other beginners to get started in this MIDI instrument world. And uh, for that purpose, I feel like this sound concept is definitely the way to go. Okay, so then how do these sounds then get out into the world? Well, there are a couple of options for this. First of all, I'm using the Teensy's uh, built-in DAC or digital to analog converter for the audio. I decided that the official Teensy audio board is just overkill for this specific purpose. The DAC outputs 12-bit audio, which of course is not as fancy as the audio board, which can output 16 bits, which is basically CD quality. For comparison, the classic 8-bit sound of old consoles and computers provides 16 times lower resolution than my 12-bit output. It honestly sounds great for what I'm doing and it helps to keep the electronics simple as well. The new breakout board has two audio outputs. One is this mini jack socket on the front, which is connected through a DC blocking capacitor and which provides a line out signal. This works great for the small battery driven speakers that you might have for your phone or the typical computer speaker, for example, which is what I'm using right now. Now this output on its own doesn't provide enough power to drive standalone speakers, but contrary to what I've read all over the internet, it actually works just fine with a pair of cheap earbuds such as these ones. Mind you, this is not a recommendation to go and do this with your own Teensy without some preparation. Actually, the developer of these boards warns about the dangers of this all over the forums. So let's just say that I'm experimenting with this so that you don't have to. You're welcome. The other audio output provides power as well as sound, and so it comes out through this triple header rather than an audio socket. I'm still trying out different things on this output, and currently I'm running a Stemma amplifier and speaker set from Adafruit. It doesn't provide a lot of loudness and it's not super high audio quality, but on the other hand it's so tiny that I'm able to actually fit it inside any one of the instruments, even with this uh, little 3D printed case that I made for it, so that's super cool. I'm also experimenting with a homegrown LM386 based amplifier, which will hopefully work both for high-end headphones as well as small speakers. So I'll get back to that in future videos. So that just leaves the onboard power. I've opted for a really simple setup where the microcontroller can be powered either with the USB or with batteries. And there's a simple diode circuit that protects everything from overload if you plug in both things at the same time or the wrong way around or whatever. I recommend four rechargeable NIMH or nickel metal hydride batteries as a power source. But TNT is quite flexible as far as voltages go and so old school alkaline cells will do the job as well and even a one cell lithium polymer or LiPo battery can work. The reason why I like these NIMH cells is because the alkalines have a tendency to change voltage quite dramatically as they discharge while the LiPo batteries famously can catch on fire if you overcharge or over discharge them. Uh, the NIMH batteries are stable and safe and they provide plenty of power for hours of use so to me that's just a no-brainer. And I think that pretty much covers everything. So what does it all mean? Well, apart from being really great news for the Continuum Lab workshops, it also means that now I can take my click instruments wherever I go. Without needing my computer, without bothering those around me, and without having to plug in at all. Pretty neat, huh? I'm currently entering the final design phase of this new click concept and preparing to offer the uh, workshops and electronics to schools and other interested parties. So if you're interested in using this kit in your classroom, maybe with your own kits or even just getting one for yourself, then drop me a line over at continuumlab.com. I'll put a link to the contact page in the description. If you have any other comments or questions, feedback, then drop it in the comments. And if you are interested in this kind of stuff, then don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more news on the Continuum Lab instrument kit. Take care until next time, and I'll see you in the Continuum.